Hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. Hope you've been well. I know I have. And we're gonna start this week's episode where we left off last week. I went on yet another awesome metal detecting adventure at that insane colonial site. And once again, I found something out of this world. And although it sparked a bit of controversy on Facebook, I am positive about what I have given the true experts I spent time talking to. And I'm excited to share that very special find with you. Now, before we hop in, as always, an ever-present reminder, I now sell metal detecting equipment. So if you need anything metal detecting gear related at all, shoot me an email at stephdiggs at gmail.com, or you can always message me on Facebook as well. Now, without further ado, let's hop in. Well, Nick's out here with me today. Same site we were at last week. Well, it, that I was at last week. She's got something cool, but really quick, hold that thought. Um, just for anyone wondering, yes, came back, sifted for the uh, intaglio. No dice. We gave it about 45 minutes, and uh, yeah, can't find it, so I'll have to get a new insert for that. But she just got it first. Oh my god! A Japanese beetle. I've never found one before. <laughs> Just kidding. You said you have a tom bag with a pattern on it? I think I have a match to this at home. I do. I have an exact match. I wonder if the back is lead like mine. Um, I can't quite tell. Oh, that's beautiful though. Congrats. See, you gotta dig those low tones. She was just like, ah, this is a two. Exactly, I've dug tom back buttons of this size and a little smaller that ring up super low. And it's just loaded with iron in here. Cause like I've said before, I think there was a home site up here. And then, you know, throughout the years, for whatever reason, they kind of push the dirt this way. I don't know, I'm kind of making stuff up, but that's my theory, sticking to it. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful button. Congrats. Okay, well, this was kind of a tough signal. <laughs> I got a seven on the equinox and it was really, really faint. Um, a few inches down there though, I just pulled this out. And it's not exciting, but I just want to show you guys what this is. This is actually, if stupid grass could get off of it, this is an upholstery tack or possibly it would have gone on a saddle. Could be leather ornamentation of either kind. So if you see these in the field, just wanted to let you know what they are. Okay, next target here came up a solid 17 on the Equinox, and it was really loud, proud, sounded huge, and sounded shallow, and all of those things are true. I got a big piece of brass down here. I don't know what it is. Huh. It's rolled up. Does it have a hole in this side? I think I know what this is, actually. This is more than likely because of the hole in the side. That's what I'm looking at to differentiate this from an umbrella parasol. I think this is actually either a dagger or sword scabbard, uh, bayonet scabbard, anything in that arena. And if that's the case, that's a really awesome find. But uh, let's, let me brush that off and I'll come right back. Okay, well, cleaned it off as best I could. Definitely a heavy cast brass. Um, well, maybe not. I don't know. It could just be filled with dirt. I'm still not sure what this is, to be honest with you. I do think it is some kind of scabbard tip. Um, but I don't know. I could come back and tell you it's a parasol tip. I just, I'm not seeing any ornamentation that's typical of a parasol tip. Um, so we're going to go with scabbard tip. That's pretty awesome. Hopefully that's what it is. Well, Nick just alerted me to uh, some wildlife. <laughs> this is really cool, actually. I've never seen anything like that. Look at all those Japanese beetles. That's so cool. They're beautiful. Those two look like they're having fun right there, so I guess I'll uh, cut the camera now. <laughs> there's one to your left there. Oh, actually, there's, there's two couples. One there, one there. And there's more over there. Wow. Where? There's those, those. There's another one over there. Man. Yep, it's a... Uh, it's breeding time. Okay. <laughs> that was very interesting, but we're gonna cut that down. <laughs> okay, well, I'm up on top of the hill now where I think the home site may have sat. And um, this isn't why I turned the camera on. I have something better in the plug, but this is lead, as you can probably see. 
but the shape of it is telling me that it's probably window sealant and they would have used that in the colonial era so that's just another hint you know if you're out and you find this kind of stuff um that there probably was a home site where you're hunting in case you're unsure but in any case i got an eight on the equinox reading six inches down and something tiny around just flipped out so i guess it's a button yep i think oh it may have a design on there all right let me brush it off Okay, well, this is probably one of the most modern things I've found here. I think it's an old snap. On the back, it appears to still have some leather attached to it. So that's kind of cool. But I would say either that was probably dropped in the last 100 years or so. So not the 250 to 300 year old time range we're looking for, but it was a good signal. All right, well, I got something pretty cool in the plug here. Bring up a 12 to 13 on the Equinox. It was really loud. And it's pretty shallow. I did take a peek at what it is. I'm very sad that it's broken, but I figured we'd just completely extract it together. There we go. That is half of a colonial shoe buckle frame. And with those bulges towards the inside, that's gonna be early to mid 1700s. That's a nice early piece right there. Oh, it's sad that it's broken, but per usual, I'll just circle around a little bit maybe a 10 foot radius and see if I can find the rest because that would be a really good display piece. Nice early buckle. Okay, well, I have something else old here. It was uh, about a 16 signal on the Equinox, about six inches down and that just flipped right out there. Looks like we have a little button and I don't think we have anything on it. Usually we don't. It appears to be brass, it's not Tom back. But hey, that is a good target. And again, as always, if I see something on the front when I brush it off, I'll come back. But otherwise, we'll keep moving. Okay, well, right now I'm using the tractor lines as grid marks, kind of, so I can just easily go up and down these little paths here. And I got a 15 signal. It wasn't very deep, maybe six inches or so. I see something round down there, so I would just assume it's a button but I haven't really looked at it yet. I think, yep, it's got, yep, yeah, does that have a shank? Yes, it does. Cool, I think it's actually brass. I thought that was gonna be Tom back because it was ringing up pretty low. All right, cool, let me brush that off. Well, it would appear I was somewhat incorrect with my ID. <laughs> it's not a button. I think this is actually an early bit boss just based on the attachment on the back. I could be wrong. Once I get it home and clean it up, I'll know for sure, but um, that would explain why it rang up a 15. They tend to ring up a little bit on the lower side if they're thin like that. Um, and I have found a lot of horse tack out here, so that makes sense. All right. Okay, well, I think I have another button here. It was ringing up 11 on the Equinox, about six inches down. And I think I can even see the shank popping up. I just opened the plug and it was right there. Let's see, one of these days they'll have a pattern on them, <laughs> at least for me. Uh, don't think there's anything on it, but hey, if I find out that there is, you know I'll come back. Well, I haven't a clue what this is, but it's the best signal I've ever gotten in this field. Solid, solid, solid 22. I couldn't be any closer to the edge of the field. Well, I guess I could be. <laughs> And there's that hill up there where I think the home site sat. So, don't know what it is. I think it's a piece of copper. Um, the way it was ringing up. Very, very thick. So, don't know, but I'm going to brush it off and I'll come back and maybe we'll try to figure it out together. Well, there it is. I brushed it off. You can see some kind of design coming through, but um, I can't see exactly what that is yet. Other side... My eyes might be playing tricks on me. I thought I saw something on that, too. Very thick. I have no idea. It's way too big to be part of a shoe buckle frame for anybody who's going to say that or suggest it. And I think I just wiped the design clean off. <laughs> Not really. I just wiped dirt on it. Uh, huh. Okay, well, you know, I guess I'll stay in this little area because there's no way that I wouldn't have heard that before, so I've never swung over here. All right. If I only knew what I just dug, I would have been doing cartwheels around the field because it's pirate treasure. I didn't stutter. 
Now I know that copper piece doesn't really look like a coin, but as it turns out, it is. Let's look closer. I'll preface this by saying that I know it would have ended up in most people's trash cans, but you guys know me by now. Unless I am 100% convinced it's garbage, I examine it closer first. After the coin completely dried when I got home, I noticed clear markings on both sides, especially when I looked through my jeweler's loop. After several hours of research and reaching out to my most knowledgeable detectorist friends, everyone said the same thing without me prompting them with a context. That's hammered! Yes! Not something I ever expected to find in the United States, especially a copper one. Those seem to turn up way less frequently than silver cobs. Now, even with everybody backing me up that I had spoken with, I went one step further. I reached out to pirate treasure hunting legend, Captain Carl Fismer. Now, if by chance you haven't heard of him, you need only do a quick Google search to find him. He's probably your grandfather's age, and the man is still diving. Unreal. Not to mention, he's probably handled more Spanish cobs than anyone in the world. So, who better to reach out to? And the best part is that he does believe this is a Miraviti, which is a Spanish hammered copper coin. Now, when he shared my Facebook post, a couple of his colleagues did think that this was a Philip IV 8 Miraviti that was clipped down to maybe a 4. And based on my research, that's what I kind of figured out as well. But what does all of this mean? Let's talk about cobs for a minute, because even though my piece in the video looks like a nondescript copper blob, like I said, it's been proven to be a coin. And cobs look so different from today's coinage because they were cut from crude bars of copper and silver. They were weighed on a scale to determine their denomination and cut down to size even more if necessary. And once the weight was appropriate based on the cut, it was then stamped with a long hammer, a hell of a lot of elbow grease, and a planchet on top of and underneath your piece of copper or silver. Now again, what I found was most likely an 8 Miraviti, which is the largest denomination of this copper coin. Eventually, it's believed that somebody cut it down to the denomination of a 4 Miraviti, based mostly upon its extraordinarily peculiar size. Now I'm going to show you a couple of close-up comparisons between my coin and one that I was able to find online, which is very similar. First and foremost, let's examine the edges. As you can see, my Maravidi on the top very closely resembles the non dug example on the bottom. This is to give you an idea of how crudely cut these coins really were. And now how about that ever-present cross that you're familiar with on depictions of pirate treasure coins? Well, I'll bet at first glance you can't see it on mine, but take a look at this. I took photos in different lighting and bumped up the contrast a bit so that you can clearly see a stamped cross. There's no denying it. You can even see evidence that this is a coin along the edges where I've circled it. Now, here's where things get tricky. I was instructed by a friend to coat this in vegetable oil because he thought it might really bring up the cross and really darken the recessed areas. Unfortunately, that proved to be a very poor decision on a 400-year-old coin. And yeah, in case I failed to mention it, this coin dates anywhere from the 1620s to the 1660s. And interestingly, this date range falls right in line with the Native American jewel I found at this site a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, when I was taking measurements of the coin with a set of calipers that I have, the patina began to flake off in big chunks because the vegetable oil that I had soaked it in was taking the patina along with it as it dried more. And sadly, this left me only one option to stabilize the coin. Electrolysis. Now, you can tell me I haven't done it right in the past or whatever you want to say, but I'm just not a fan of electrolysis for copper coins. I like to keep them for iron. And as it's happened in the past, the electrolysis pretty much wiped this coin of almost all details. The only way that you can see it's a coin is along the edges like where I circled in those previous images. So it's still obviously a coin, at least to the trained eye, but I have to admit I do cringe a little bit when I look at it. Nonetheless, it was still a thrill to dig and I'm so happy to have it. Now with all of that said, we have reached the end of this week's hunt, but let's go take a closer look at everything we found right now. Okay, it's wrap up time and somebody is going to notice that something is missing. Patrick, I'm sorry, that wrap-up board is just so huge, but you know I'll be using it when we go to our detecting club meetings because I always have a bunch to bring at the end of the month. So let's go over what we found on this hunt. Starting over here, we have our small sword 
uh, scabbard tip and took me a while to come to that conclusion because, you know, I mean, it really could have been a parasol top to an umbrella, but I just don't think so. It's too hefty for that and pretty crude. Um, and it's got this hole in the side, which is a very good indicator. I have found a uh, bayonet scabbard tip before and it was about half the size of this. So that's how I know it is an 18th century uh, small sword scabbard tip. Pretty awesome. All right, so we also have a small piece of shoe buckle frame that I really wish was complete. That would have been amazing. You can even kind of see file marks there where they were filing it down out of the mold. So that's always really cool. I just like seeing actually how things were made. So love that. Uh, we have our bridal boss here. We can tell by the attachment there that it does not look like a regular shank because it's not a button. Plain on the front. I found maybe, I don't know, a dozen of these or so. And to be honest with you, I get kind of uh, <laughs> disappointed to find out that it's not a button that somebody wore. It was just horse tack. So um, I'm on the fence about what I like with horse tack and what I don't. This isn't my favorite thing to find, but it was still a good target. And given how much horse tack came out of that uh, field, not at all surprised. Um, our upholstery tack, a couple of buttons. This is the one that I said was uh, early 1800s. Couldn't see the back mark in the video, but that's why I put a close-up in the video. Um, I did steal Nicola's Tom back button because I wanted you to see it in all of its glory. Absolutely beautiful. As I was saying in the video, though, I have one as well, and it's also got a lead back. Um, we found out after we filmed that hers, you know, does have a lead back, so that's weird. I don't know um, if, if that would have gone on something different. It's bizarre, but I found one eh, a couple miles from there, so... Interesting to see how people travel, I guess, if it was from, in fact, the same garment. So, very cool. Kind of a modern snap there. This was probably the chewiest tomback button I've ever dug. You can tell it's a tomback because of the way the shank is attached. That is not on any kind of brass button. So, this is actually tomback, but I think that was a composite of brass, copper, and zinc, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like I'm screwing that up, but you see how it's not even shiny? Um, you'd only know it was a tomback if you really knew what you were looking at with the uh, shank. So still a pretty cool find. And of course the star of the show, hopefully you can see it a little bit better. Um, <laughs> you know what, let me get in some better light here. Do, 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 do. Is this any better? There we go, yes. Okay, so as I mentioned, I did what I hate having to do, which is throwing this in electrolysis, but it is what it is. You can see very defined lines on the top of the coin there, if that even is the top. We don't really know. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty obvious to me that it's a coin, but I guess it's because I know what I'm looking at. The other side, really not much to see there. Um, the dead giveaway is kind of the way it's clipped on the sides. That's really the only way you can tell it's a coin <laughs> now that it had to go into electrolysis. So I'm still pretty bummed about that. Um, the cross was once right here in the middle. Now it's just kind of an indent. Um, and I know you can't see it very well when it's in the flip, but trust me, it's even worse when it's out of the flip. So yeah, still an amazing find. Awesome piece of history. Very happy to have that. And going back to my little wrap up over here, that will do it for this week. Okay, guys, well, as always, I really hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And remember, get out there, save what you can, do what you love. We'll see you next week.